Welcome everyone to today's Ninja Skill Booster. My name is Ninja Matt, for those of you that haven't met me before. And today's session is all about dealing with overwhelm. So thank you so much for joining us today. I can see a lot of welcome comments coming through in the chat here. Let's start with an acknowledgement of country. I am coming to you today from Gauringai country, the northern beaches of Sydney. And I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land and also the lands that we're all joining from today acknowledge their elders past present and emerging and thank them for their custodianship of our waters land air animals culture so um, welcome today everybody I would like to start today with a little bit of a meditation just like a short breathing practice for us to all just connect and start to reduce our overwhelm if you like. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen at the moment. So if you're comfortable closing your eyes or simply taking a, looking at something nice out the window or on your bookshelf or on the wall, if you're not comfortable closing your eyes, just bring your awareness to the breath. One of the best ways of slowing down overwhelm in the moment is coming back to our breath, feeling the coolness of the in-breath and the grounding and relaxation of the out-breath. Feeling the body, feeling grounded through the chair you're sitting in or through the feet if you're standing. And on every out breath, ah, you can even make a bit of a sound if you like, we can't hear you. On every out breath, ah, a little bit of letting go. All right, I said it would be a short breathing practice meditation. So bringing our awareness back to our body, a little bit of movement in our body. And when you're ready to open your eyes, coming back to the group, thank you everybody. Very, very short start there with our, our little meditation. So let's get into the content. Lots to share today. Lots to share with everyone. All about overwhelm. For those of you that haven't met me, as I mentioned, my name is Matt. You will get a follow-up email after today's session with a recording of the session with all of my contact details and everything. So please feel free to connect with me um, via LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, our, our business is there on Facebook and Instagram. And we post a lot of really interesting tips and reminders and content there. So um, yeah, thank you again for joining us. Everything we do at Think Productive is around this vision, this vision of creating a work revolution where everyone loves Mondays. And this is what gets us all out of bed in the morning. Ninja Julie's here today. Julie was saying, welcome at the start. I don't know if you want to turn your camera on Julie and say a quick hello again. Many of you will recognize Julie and have done workshops with her. Hi, Julie. Hi. Good morning, everyone. So yeah, this, thanks, Julie. This gets us out of bed in the morning, this idea of creating a work revolution where everyone loves Mondays. It's such a stressful environment we're all living in and working in. And whatever we can do through our productivity training and now our new sessions and our new content around leadership, kind, kindful leadership, um, is what we're doing in, in this space. So feel free to connect with us. Um, we can run workshops for your organisation. We can do individual coaching, whatever you need. But today is all about overwhelm. What is it? Why it happens? Three ways to deal with it. And a bonus tip today. So, so lots of content to get through today. And um, really excited to share this with you. It will be interactive at times. So what is overwhelm? It's a good place to start. I'd love to hear from everyone that's with us today. We've got lots, well, we've got more than 100 people with us today. So we had nearly 300 people register for this session today. But what is it? I'd love you to put in the chat, please. Make sure you set your chat to go to everyone so we all get to share from your knowledge. When does overwhelm strike for you? So what brings up this overwhelm? That's going to help us get an understanding of what's causing it. So I'd love to know. A lack of control, a lack of structure, too many tasks. I am reading these for the recording. Too many tasks due at the same time. Thank you. High workload. When I'm busy, 
feeling pulled in many directions when everything seems to be happening at once. Getting hangry, I like that, Sarah, thank you. Conflicting demands, lots of distraction. Oh, and all of these things I'm reading out here and you can see in the chat, they, they are happening to most of us most days, aren't they? Distractions, workload, constant change, too much going on, personal and work. Yeah, that's a good acknowledgement there that it's not just our workload or our work that's often causing overwhelm, it's our personal life as well. If we've committed to too many things, if we're doing too many things, no clear direction, cost of living. Yes, Amy, nice one. That's definitely happening for most of us these days, I think, overload. So there's a lot of reasons it happens. I think it's good to acknowledge at this point that it's all around us. All of these triggers, all of these things are all around us. So we can control some of these things through some of the techniques I'll share today, but we also can acknowledge that they're there and what can we actually do about it internally? So it's a good way to be thinking about this. So let's start by defining overwhelm. One of the first definitions that comes up when we look at overwhelm in a, in a dictionary or something is to bury or drown between a huge mass of something. And it actually, one of the first definitions that comes up is around actually, actually drowning underwater. Like I'm overwhelmed, I'm drowning in the water. And it can feel like this. We can definitely feel like we're drowning in the water. We're drowning in the work. We're drowning in our life. Another part of the definition is around having a strong emotional effect on us. So I'm overwhelmed with love. I'm overwhelmed with kindness or I'm overwhelmed with grief or I'm overwhelmed with stress. So it can be positive and negative, but definitely we're relating it to normally a feeling of stress, a feeling of too much to do, too much going on. So there's a lot of words on this slide. I'll read through this about the impact of overwhelm. The cognitive impact of feeling perpetually overwhelmed can range from mental slowness, forgetfulness, confusion, difficulty concentrating or thinking logically, to a racing mind or an impaired ability to problem solve. When we have too many demands on our thinking over an extended period of time, cognitive fatigue can also happen, making us more prone to distractions and our thinking less agile, flexible. Any of these effects alone can make us less effective and leave us feeling even more overwhelmed. So, wow, <laughs> a bit overwhelming, that definition. Not really a definition, but a description of what the overwhelm is doing to our body, to our breathing, to our brains. One of the things to be aware of when we are starting to feel overwhelmed is it's our lizard brain, our amygdala, the stress response. Many of you have done our ninja workshops and we've talked about this. When we get this stress response, the amygdala fires up. Um, I'll just put the word amygdala in the chat there for anyone that wants to go doing any more Googling on this. The amygdala fires up. We have what's called an amygdala hijack. The rest of our brain shuts down. We go into fight and flight mode. Fight, flight, fear, freeze, fall. And there's about three other reactions that people talk about these days. Fight, flight, fear, freeze, fall. And when this is happening, we're not able to communicate. We're not able to function at our best. So we'll talk about what to do about this when this lizard brain's firing up. And these days it's happening more and more. COVID was a very stressful time for many of us. And a lot of these stressful reactions, responses that we went through in lockdowns and COVID, even though we're already in April, 2023, it's still amongst us, but it's not just that that's causing stress. It's all the many other things that you've, you've mentioned in the chat there. So why? Why are we feeling this overwhelm? What's going on in our work and our life that's making this happen? It's sometimes because we're stuck in the doing. There is so much going on. And not only like this image with all the plates spinning here, what's also happening if, if this was a video, there'd be new plates coming in all the time. <laughs> there'd almost be someone there throwing plates at us from the sidelines, which is the changing of priorities, the new things that are coming up. So this is, this is making it a challenge for us. And often we're just focusing on the plate that's about to fall. We're focusing on the most urgent, the loudest thing. We're focusing on the thing that is just going to stop that plate from falling. So we're not getting to our priorities. We're also not able to stop. As soon as we stop, we feel like all the plates are going to fall. 
So we stopped at the start of today's session with that very short, possibly 60, 70 second breathing exercise. And I hope that made you feel better. I hope that made you just ah, feel a little bit calmer. So we can stop. That's a good point to think about here. So this lizard brain, this lizard brain's happening. This amygdala hijack is being caused by all of these little things that you've mentioned in the chat there. Some of them were big, some of them were small, but we're bringing in this reptilian reaction. So let's get into the, the what to do about it part. I'm just going to check the chat here, see if there were any further comments or anything, not at the moment. Let's get into how to deal with this overwhelm like a ninja, because I'm sure that's why you're here today. We all know what it is, how to deal with it. So the first one, we've already done this, breathe. Coming back to our breath, breath is life. Our breath is always here to support us. Our breath is always here to keep us alive and it's happening automatically. Often we're not knowing it because it's just happening in the background. But when we can bring our mindfulness to our breath, when we can bring our focus to our breath, it has such a big impact on our body. So the breathing exercise that we did earlier, we, we focused on that out breath. I want to do another short exercise here to show you how easy this is. And it's a very similar breathing exercise. So if you're comfortable again, just coming back into that space, closing your eyes or relaxing and just taking a gentle in breath and an extended exhalation and doing that a few times. So if you're breathing in for maybe a count of three, one, two, three, Breathe out for a count of maybe five. One, two, three, four, five. Breathing in for three. Out for five. Now there's many different breathing techniques. You can do a couple more of those while I talk. There's many different breathing techniques. This one, specifically this one, starts to reset the brain. So if we have a amygdala hijack. If the brain starts getting taken over by this stress, you can always pause and do this reset breath. Now it's interesting, just a little aside here, a lot of people get stressed about breathing activities because there's so many to choose from. It's like, oh no, which one do I choose in the moment? Which one's the best one? It really doesn't matter. Just bringing your attention to your breath is achieving most of the goal already. But if you can then just bring a bit more mindfulness there and start to extend the out breath. That really helps. So that is, a, that is a ninja superpower right there, how to reset the brain. The other thought around this is emptying our mind or emptying our brain. Many of you have seen this image. It comes up quite often in our productivity ninja training because this is reality for many of us. There is so much going on in our brain, so much to think about. This is causing even more distraction. This is causing even more stress. So what to do about this? One of my most favorite, I think, impactful techniques is doing the brain dump. We talk about this in our ninja sessions, get everything out on paper, get it out of the head, get it into a system that we can use. So we're going to do a quick activity here today. We really, even though these ninja skill boosters are only 30 minutes long, there's time to do some activities. So I would love you to grab a pen and paper or open up a Word doc or something and just for a couple of minutes here, just dump down everything that's in your brain, everything you're thinking about that you need to do. If you've got little post-it notes or pieces of paper, you can do it with like one thing on each piece of paper, but you don't have to. Let's just practice this and get a list down. But everything, not just your to-do list for the day, everything that comes up, everything you're thinking about. I'm going to give you two minutes when I don't talk. Okay, two minutes, go. So if you're watching the recording, we're just in the middle of the brain dump. We're doing a two minute activity. Or if you've just joined us and wondering why I'm not saying anything, getting everything captured that's in the brain. Keep the breath flowing. 
stay calm and just think everybody what's what's all this other stuff think about other parts of your life your health your finances your family your community your work your different projects just put it all in a big list All right, I hope you've got at least 20 things written on that list. <laughs> some of you will have more and some of you will have less, but that's a good starting point. It's getting it out of the brain. So this is our second tip for the day, clearing the mind. So do the breathing, clear the mind. And the next step, once we've got all this data now, you might like to do that brain dump again. You might like to spend at least 10 minutes on that, just really clearing the brain. And then you've got all the data. Once we've got all that data captured, it's time to do some boss thinking. It's time to plan with that. What do we do with that? Get all that data into a system. We call that your second brain. But once we've got that data organized, do some boss thinking. Boss thinking is something we can do any time of the day, any time we like. And it's a really powerful technique to do at the start of the day. Now, boss thinking is when we stop the work and we step into a more empowered state of mind. And we think like a boss, we think about our priorities, we think about our plans, we look at what's in our calendar, and we really set ourselves up for success. So then when we flick our brain across into what we call our worker mode, as opposed to our boss mode, we can get stuck into the work, we've got a clear set of things to do, and we know exactly what we need to get done. So boss thinking can relate to our tasks, it can also just relate to our broader life. It's like, often we're so caught in the on the treadmill. We don't take the time to pause and reflect on what's really important. So we have a tool for you. This is called the daily checklist. And for those of you that have done our ninja workshops, it's in, it's in the handout that we give you. But for those that don't, um, Julie's going to put a link in the chat for us. She's already done it. Thank you, Julie. Um, they'll give you access to this daily checklist. Um, this is a great way to start the day. This is a great way to manage overwhelm because it takes us through a structured mental cleanse at the start of the day. To me, one of the most important things for this checklist is getting our five priorities set for the day. Getting our five priorities set reduces the overwhelm and today's all about overwhelm, but it also gives us a focus for the day. When things go off track, when things get a bit crazy, it gives us something to come back to. Instead of coming back to a list of 100 things or a list of 30 things, we can come back to a list of five. And that keeps us focused, keeps us going. So this daily checklist is a really powerful way to set ourselves up for success. So you can download this from our website. And Julie's put the link in the chat there already. Thank you, Julie. So another little activity to do some boss thinking. So boss thinking is not just about our tasks. It's about our whole life. It's about just taking time out to support ourselves. So just a minute or so here to do some thinking. Can you pinpoint your primary source of overwhelm? What's the thing or the couple of things that are really causing you the most overwhelm? You know, challenge the perfectionism around this. Do you need to change those things, make a decision about those things? Is there anything you can outsource or delegate? Do you need to set some boundaries or do you need to go back and practice some ninja ruthlessness and say no to any of these things that are causing overwhelm? So I will give you a minute to have a think about this. You'll see how much you can achieve in a minute. Go.
10 more seconds. Okay, so you can see how much can be achieved in just one minute of boss thinking. I hope you found that helpful. The thing I like to say about boss thinking that I once heard a meditation teacher talking about meditation and they said, oh, so many people say to me, I don't have time to meditate. How could I possibly find an hour to meditate a day? So this is my response to people that don't have an hour to meditate. You should meditate for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I love that response. It's a bit like boss thinking. If you think to yourself, I don't have time to do the daily checklist. If I just go back to the daily checklist, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do the boss thinking. I've got too much to do. Then that's a little trigger. That's a little flag to say, okay, I really, really, really need this, especially when I'm thinking I don't have time. So that's a great thing to think about. The next thing to think about in that space of boss thinking is prioritization. Now, prioritization is something a lot of people ask for help with. It's hard to tell you exactly what to prioritize because everyone here has different roles, different responsibilities, different goals, both personal and professional, different outcomes you're looking for. But I do love this quadrant that we've got around thinking through these tasks and how to choose our priority tasks. It's a little bit like the Eisenhower matrix, but just puts it in a little bit more detail. And I will send you a detailed copy of this in the follow-up email. So what's high impact and what's high effort or low effort, if you like, on these different scales, major goals and projects. We really should be focusing on those. They're high impact, but they do take high effort. So we need some energy there. These are the quick wins. Look for anything that has high impact and low effort. You know, when you look at your goals, when you look at your outcomes that you're trying to achieve, what can I do to achieve them with the lowest effort but get the highest outcome? Let's start there. Like that's, they're the quick wins. Let's look at that. The fill-ins, these fill-in time, they take up space, they're low impact, they're low effort. We should do some of these because they're low effort, but the thankless tasks, we should be saying no to these. If they're low impact, but high effort, try to get rid of them. Do they really need to be done? No. They don't need to be done. So we, as I say, I'll share with you in the follow-up email, this detailed version of this that'll really help you use this as a tool when you're doing that boss thinking and planning through those priorities. Once we get this focus, then we can choose those top five for the day. We really know what to focus on. So really good ways of dealing with overwhelm there. The breath, the boss thinking, you know, really good ways of just bringing back to ourselves, clearing the mind. One bonus tip for you, we always love to give you three tips plus a bonus. One bonus tip for you, and I do love this one. Thanks to Ninja Julie. Ninja Julie is such a, such a fan for this one. Have some fun. When we're feeling overwhelmed, make sure we're putting some time in our day to actually have some fun. Many of us are too caught on the treadmill. We need to stop and think, what are the things I enjoy? There's a photo of Julie in her scuba gear there. She loves that. I love mountain biking. Thanks, Julie, for including a photo of mountain biking on this slide. Um, have some fun. Putting some fun in our life, putting some fun in our day is so important. There's a book called The Happiness Advantage. And The Happiness Advantage shows that the research done at Harvard proves if we have some fun, if we do something fun, the next thing we do, we get a better result. That's why it's so important to have some fun in our life, with our teams, in our work. Sometimes at work, it's as simple as a coffee run or a birthday cake or something like that. Or if we're all working virtually, getting together just for a social chat, maybe for 15 minutes, once or twice a week, getting that, keeping that social connection going. I'd love you to put in the chat just a bit of a side thought here. How do you have fun at work? It's always good to get some good ideas around how do you make your team smile? How do you make your colleagues happy? How do you make yourself happy at work? Share some ideas in the chat because we can all learn from each other here. Um, lunch together, dance around the kettle. Um, having lunch together, that's a really powerful one. Keeping that social connection going. Coffee breaks, absolutely. Doing it together, you know, stopping and having morning tea together or even just having a coffee or a tea together. A lot of people share. I'd love to see some more concepts in here. Thank you. Patting the puppy. Positive attitude with a belly laugh. Thanks, Leanne. 
lot of people also comment on even just sharing jokes or gifs in your microsoft teams chats things like this going for a walk with a colleague yes fighting off the lizards <laughs> do it together find at least one small joy every day and recognize it out loud i love that thanks renee or renai so we've covered a lot of content here already in this um, in this short session. So to bring it home for you, to really give you an action or an outcome from this session, which we like to do in all our sessions, I'd love you to have a think. What are you going to do next time you feel overwhelmed? Have a think about this. Is it the breathing? Is it a brain dump? Is it boss thinking? Is it stopping and having some fun, having a dance? So what are you going to do? I'd love you to put it in the chat. Just what's one thing? Thanks, Sylvia, you're ahead of the game. You've already done it. You know I love, you know I love sharing in the chat when everyone shares in the chat. What's the one thing for you? Pause and breathe. Yes, breathe. Lots of people coming back to talk about breathing. Go for a walk, brain dump. Yes, go and pick some flowers from the garden. And someone said to me, Recently, when there's no flowers, I go and pick some foliage. I just go and pick some leaves and some sticks and I, I make a little decoration, even if they're not flowers. Brain dump, pause and breathe. Yeah, really powerful techniques to help with the overwhelm. And don't forget the one thing we didn't mention in detail was the ninja ruthlessness, saying no. Like, what can we actually push back on? Go for a walk. Yeah, I love those ideas. Thank you, everyone. So in wrapping up for today, because these are only short sessions, I just wanted to remind everyone we do have a whole stack of new workshops this year around this kind, full leadership, um, more focused on the leadership techniques, still with a productivity angle, but moving out of the productivity space more into the leadership, emotional intelligence, you know, this kind of space, coaching, project management. So a lot of new stuff. Get in touch with us if you'd like to know more about that. Julie's put the link in the chat there that will take you to those new workshops. And as you all know, we do love to have a little giveaway in these workshops. Um, last month, we sent the books out. We didn't even email people to say they'd won, but we did send the books out. Hope you got them. Um, so please, if you'd like a copy of our Work Fuel book that Graham wrote with his nutritionist, Colette, please just send an email to hello at thinkproductive.com.au with the subject, I need ninja energy. And please include your postal address because we do need to, to know where to send it to and we will give away three of these. So thank you so much everybody for coming along. I'm just going to have a look at any other comments in the chat here. Love the delegate workshop. Thank you, Sarah. The workshops are generally for groups but we do have public workshops for individuals. So Julie might put the link in the chat for individuals, but I can even show you on our website where to find that. What I will do, I'll just stop the recording now. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. I'm just going to pause the recording and then we can just share a few more things.